Hey, what's going on, guys? So uh, today we're going to look at um, uh, some guillotine option uh, from Close Guard and uh, what to do when they start defending the guillotine. First, we're going to look at how to finish the actual guillotine. Then we're going to look at what to do when they defend the, the hand. They don't let give us access to the to the neck. Okay. So here we are in the Close Guard, and uh, we're going to get to a position where his head is under my armpit. In order for a guillotine to, to work, what I what I don't want to do is have a chin strap or something, but his head is popping out of my, uh, in front of my armpit, in front of my shoulder. This is never going to work. This is the reason most guillotines fail, especially when you see one in uh, the UFC or any uh, mixed martial arts match. People jump on guillotines all the time, and then uh, people defend it, and then their heads pop out, and now I'm in a vulnerable position where they can punch the hell out of me, right? So, the number one uh, prerequisite for good guillotine setup would be his head under my armpit, or rather, my chest over his um, here, right? So this is where I want to land eventually and then start setting up from here. How do we do that? So um, there's many ways, obviously, this can happen, but let's say his arms are not here, or uh, if it's MMA, maybe he's, he's punching and stuff like this. So when that happens, I want to put his hands on the floor. That's the easiest way to do it, because then the hands are going to be out of the way. If his hands are on my chest somewhere over here, it's going to be much harder because he's framing and he's trying to posture up and get out of here or maybe he's trying to posture up and rain punches down. So it's it's hard because my armpit is now framed and I can't really uh, put his neck in inside my armpit, right? His head inside my armpit. So the first thing I got to do is get rid of those frames here, break his posture down completely and put him in a very uh, vulnerable for him position. Then what I, what I need to do is, I can always push his head to the side, but sometimes it's hard. He's pushing maybe this way, he's driving this way or something like that. Especially if you start pushing on the head, they give you a counter reaction usually, right? So the best way to do it is move myself out of the way. In any case, when you're in close guard, you want to move your hips, you want to move your torso. And uh, the best way for me to achieve that kind of angle is to actually move myself out of the way and then wrap over his head, over rather, his, uh, his neck and shoulder, right? So I'm not gonna go for the guillotine right away. I'm gonna move myself out of the way, bring this arm across, and then just come over. Now I've trapped his head successfully. When he tries to pull his head out, it's under my armpit, it's exactly where I want it to be, okay? So I have options from here. I could just grab onto my knee here. Um, I could uh, grab in my shin, like kind of like, uh, like this. He's trapped in here pretty bad. Okay, I could even start punching him. This is MMA, I can start punching him, give me some reaction, you know, so I can occupy his mind and not make him think about defending the guillotine that's coming up. Now, the next thing I want to do is maintain my tricep here behind his uh, neck or behind the small of his head here, and then just start twisting my arm, palm out and under the chin. Okay, once I achieve that, I'm ready to, to, get the, to go for the guillotine. We'll see what to do when he uh, employs his hand to defend. Okay, but for now, let's just get to that point. So we're going this way. I'm going to go under, and I'm going to connect my hands together here. You can raise up a little bit just so the camera can see. I'm going to connect my hands like this. I'm going to grab, with my support hand, I'm going to grab the blade of my choking arm. Okay? Once I do that, because this is an arm in guillotine that we're doing, this is going to be a little different without the chin strap, okay? So once I do that, I'm going to change my angle here. And if we could come on this side. Again, this is the grip that I want. I'm grabbing the blade of my hand and I'm pulling up towards my, towards my sternum, as high on my sternum as possible, right? rather than keep my arms here, because his head is going to pop out if I do this. Pop your head out there. There's enough room for him to come out here. If I bring the lock of my hands up high, and he tries to pop his head out, it's stuck, okay? Even without gloves, imagine with MMA gloves on, it's going to be really hard for him to break it. So then, I keep changing the angle until I get to almost the side seated here. I'm going to pinch, and I'm going to crunch I'm going to show it without him afterwards. I'm going to crunch in here until I can get a tap. 
What I want is a blood choke. I don't want to bother his uh, trachea or anything like that, although it might happen. What I want to achieve is my, a blood choke. On one side is my arm, on one side of the neck, and on the other side is my rib cage. Okay, so it's all about a crunch. I'm not extending. A lot of people like to, to do this kind of thing, and that's another reason why a lot of times you lose it, because people extend their body, and then he puffs his head out. There's way too much space when you extend, okay? I'm not trying to rip his head out of the torso. I'm trying to actually compress. Okay, so I'm trying to make myself more compact and crunch into it. Without him, it would be like this, basically. Instead of extending here and giving him space to pop his head out, what I'm actually doing is this. Okay, so one more time, set up. Right here, maybe he's punching, maybe he's not. I'm defending. As soon as I get his hands on the floor, I'm gonna frame on his head here. Instead of pushing his head, I'm gonna move myself up and my, put his head in my armpit, basically. Or put my armpit on top of his head. Think about it this way. Right there. I'm gonna punch my tricep down and, and uh, trap his head, okay? From here, I'm gonna open my palm facing the other way. Get a little angle here, it's helpful. And go underneath. I lock my hands together. Now I start getting the opposite angle. And now I start crunching here, okay? This is the finish, basically. But what do we do when he starts defending with his hand? That's the part two of the, the actual setup. I got to here, and I have his head secured where I want it to be, but he knows what's coming, probably, or he just feels the hand or sees the hand going this way. So he starts defending, right? Notice that he has to open his elbow a little bit in order to start defending that choke, right? That leaves my hand my wrist kind of flexible and available and, and ready to uh, sneak under the armpit, okay? So I essentially get an underhook here on him. So notice that this is like a, um, what would that be, like a, a reverse Nelson or something? So I'm on this side. Now I'm gonna change the angle the other way. Go this way. I'm gonna get a hard overhook, overhook here, hard with it so that he doesn't toss his arm out, right? And then get a butterfly hook on this side. Even without the butterfly, if I can't sneak my leg in, I can just scissor my legs and go this way. Because of this underhook and the fact that I'm crunching his neck down, I'm able to sweep pretty easily. Now, when you do that in the gym, you gotta be very careful, or in competition, you might not be um, allowed to neck crank. You gotta be really careful not to neck crank in here. The trick is, uh, to not to get a neck crank is for him to pull his right arm from under our between our stomachs and pull out of there. Now there's no neck crank and he's good to go. Now I can start going, taking it back. Okay. So one more time. You can finish the fight there with a neck crank if they are allowed. If it's not allowed, you just give him a way out from there. Okay. So one more time. Uh, we're going to try and put their hands on the floor here, one way or another. As soon as that happens, I'm going to frame here on the ear or the side of the head and bring my armpit over his head. Once I do that, I start going for the guillotine. He sees my hand. He stops it. Okay? My tricep is still on top of his neck. I don't want this head to pop out. I already trapped him, right? I go under, get a hard wizard over here, and now I start changing angle. As I change angle, I'm crunching this side and I'm elevating this side. I can just use my, my legs over here and a little bit of help from my wizard. Sorry, my underhook. As I come up on top, if I maintain the wizard here on this side, I can definitely crunch his neck. Okay, that's not good. Or crank his neck, rather. So instead, I'm gonna let go and give my way out, out of the neck crank. And as he does that, I can start taking the back from here. You can defend because that's what people do and for his self worth with the darts. Yeah, faster. This is gonna be it. <laughs> so, so this was a simple setup for a guillotine, arming guillotine from the Ghost Guard, and a follow up when they defend the uh, the entry of the hand. 
All right, uh, stick around for the next episode. We're going to look at the uh, defense of the guillotine from close guard. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, etc. Thank you, Uprising. Thank you, Brian. Vlad, thanks for recording.